Ja, das sind ja mal. Weil ich sonst sage, wie die Lade ist, dann ist es gut. Ja, das Müller kommt nicht mehr aus dem Bett, das ist ja nicht Müller aus der Hand. Da kann ich sagen, dass es vier Jahre für Leute ist. Das ist ein Müller. Als altes Leid ist es drei, das ist gut schon. Ja, das ist gut. Ja, das ist gut. Ja, das ist gut. Ja, das ist gut. Ja, nee, verzeker. Oké, okay, zoals gaan we zo'n Engels doen voor die vrouw? Ik zal al trouwen maar weer in Maybe, maybe just firstly welcome, welcome to the show. Ja. Yeah. And thanks for taking, thanks, thanks for taking time to, um, to chat to us. Ja. Ja. Thanks, Johan. Thanks, Hans. It's a pleasure. Oké. Okay. We heard that you played some. I had some inside info that you played some high school rugby at number eight in your junior years. How did it happen that you converted to centre? Funny story. Uh, I remember it so well. Uh, I, I was seven years old when I when I started playing at uh, grade grade college uh, uh, some A's, and my lock uh, at seven years you only have uh, five guys in the pack, right? So it's just a prop, uh, hooker prop, and then two locks. Hmm. And uh, I got there and I wanted to play in back line. And the coach looked at me and he said, no, you and the guy next to me was Gwim Prinsler. Well, and he yes. said, that you, you two guys are going to be my, uh, my locks. And I was like, no, I don't want to play locks. Like, no, 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 you guys are my locks. <laughs> okay. So Gwim and I was in sub A, we, we were the two locks for our uh, sub A team. And my brother was the scrum off, actually. And uh, another guy who matriculated with us, he, he played for the third team. He was at number 10, part of higher Gordon. Okay. And uh, he, I think he stopped playing rugby and matriculated. He was a he was very good uh, hurdles. Mm. Um, and then I played uh, from under nine. I, I didn't play lock anymore. So I played eight men, uh, because then we had eight guys in the back instead of five. Mm. Um, so I played eight and up until seven eight, and seven eight the guys just uh, got bigger, and I, just, uh, wow. I couldn't. I, I realized that I'm not gonna make it uh, the big leagues if I if I keep playing in the forwards, and uh, yeah, work kept on growing, and I didn't. <laughs> I got faster, yeah. and uh, so it's then at nine actually it was the first time I played in the back line. The thing is, at number eight, you play anyways, you play wherever you want. So yeah. at seven, six, seven, eight, I played eight, <clears> but I was in the back line most of the time. So, yeah, okay. um, but officially at nine, uh, at yeah. the age of 17, I moved to wing. I played wing for, for Grace first team on uh, SR9, and then only in the trick I started playing center. Oh, great. Okay. But you still enjoy the, the fetching every now and then, getting involved in the stuff yeah, for the forwards? Yeah, I, I, yes, I, I did. I, When I got to France, I, I, I injured my ankle a little bit, uh, and and then from the ankle, my knee got a little bit sore. So for the first two or three years, yeah, I, I, I left the, the the poaching a little bit. But now the last two three years, I started trying to get my head stuck into a rugby okay. game every now and then. Um, but yeah, you get a couple of big guys. Yeah, the, the, you see the French rugby is a bit slower than the Super rugby. So you, what what happens? You get some. I won't say overweight, but you get like 130. Sometimes you play against about 140, 130 k's. Yeah. It's a bit big, bigger than the, the normal guy you get in Super Rugby. Super Rugby, you hardly get someone weighing 130, 135. Yeah. And here, yeah, often you get a guy like that. I mean, if he, he, uh, he hit you in a rut, you, you <laughs> hit back. So, uh, yeah. For a couple of years, I stayed clear, clear from the, from the rut here. Okay. Yeah, you mentioned now you um, you know your days at Grey College. Um, um, which game for for Grey College was your most memorable? Yes, I had a lot. I, uh, um, every game I played with my brother was special. Uh, a lot of the other players we played together became brothers to me, um, so it was really special. I think one game I remember very well was uh, was against Marisburg under forty. So I'm a 14 year and I was I was pretty sick. I was I was ill on the train. We took a train to Marysburg. Now I, I wasn't um, I, I was I was ill and I, I was coughing and um, and we stressed because this was our first inter schools for uh, for high schools. Our first under 14 inter school games and yeah, it was a great day. We we won four and I, I remember I just had a, I just had a great game I think I scored like three or four times in the first half and wow. then it was just a, a really awesome game yeah. and 
Yeah, it was good playing against them also, just to see, even though we, we won far, I just love that that was my first inter schools because baseball has got great traditions as well. Like they, uh, the fact that they uh, they paint their, their boots, so it, all, every player in their team uh, play with black, black painted <coughs> boots. So there's no no one's, even if it's Adidas or Nike, I mean, that, that it's, it's polished black, pitch black. Oh, okay. Um, and also they, they first in field, it's called Goldstone. Uh, it's a field, it's, it's as hard as any free state field in the, in the winter. Oh. <laughs> um, and it was, yeah, it was just a good, good one. And then in Matric, we had a couple, in the, uh, the Matric game, we played against Office in Lufthansa. It was also a very great, um, a wonderful game for me. Something I will always remember. Uh, uh, in the fact, because I had a, I still got, I still got a, he's still my good friend. There's a, a guy called Donny Swanapu. He was my friend from some A. So when I, when I arrived, like work first, so when I got there, this guy was, was in my class. Hmm. And um, he always played in the 80. And then when we got to uh, stand at eight, nine, he, he, he started playing second or 13, even 14. And then in matric, uh, what happened just before this office game, sorry, this is, before the office game, our one wing had concussion and another wing had concussion. And all of a sudden, uh, Donnie was the only other wing and that, that put him up from the third team. So he played, okay. he, he, he only played one first team game for, for, for great. Okay. Um, and um, he got pulled up from the third team to play this one game for the first team. And this was on the day they made the Hansi Cormier movie. So I don't know if you guys see that. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Movie. Yeah, so, yeah. so this guy, Frank Rotenbach, he's still, uh, he used to play Kia in Sierra Yes, I remember, yeah. I remember that guy. So Frank, yeah, I was, I'm actually still in contact with him just because of this. I still like, yeah. uh, I, I chat to him, I, I had a chat to him the other day. He's a great guy. And, and anyway, so he, he played this role of Hansi Cormier and um, he was there at the school, like, trying to feel the vibe. So he had this speech, he said like, yeah, the one thing about Hansi is that um, everyone keeps on telling him is that he can, he can always get the best out of, out of uh, yeah. people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And he said he never, he never really know what it meant. He, he didn't know how, um, he couldn't put his finger on it, you know? Yeah. And, um, he had this speech at the school and uh, he, he, he saw us training before this big inter school against Office. And Office is always a massive physical team and yeah. they, they had a great team that year. Um, and he looked at this, this, this friend of mine, this Don, in the hall and he pointed him. He, tell, he told him, Listen, I saw you train yesterday when I walked past your training with the head master. I just want to tell you, you're going to have a great game tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And um, and he stood up in the hall in front of everyone. Everyone cheered him. I was like, Don't, Don, you can have yeah. it. Don't, don't worry. The guys got your back. Play. The guys were shitting himself because he was playing in his first person game. And he's, yeah. he's, uh, he's from the 30. And uh, so he got, and this is my mate, man. This is a guy I, I know from, from seven years old. Yeah. He sat next to me in the class. And uh, it's the first guy I, I had a sleepover with. So yeah, I, I, yeah. my brother took our sleeping bags and go to his house and we had a sleepover there at seven. Um, anyway, so he, he got to the um, first half, he scored a brilliant try in the one corner. Second half, he scored two tries. So he finished, yes. he scored three tries yes. in the game. This yes, one, from the 13. One video type, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a video in, in this Hans Cormier movie. Hans oh. movie is a video of him running around and scoring his third try. And when he scored his third try, the, the bench, the uh, the second team and the third team was the guys who were sitting on the bench. And those, the, those guys were actually his, uh, his teammates. So mm. when he scored the tries, he just like looked at them and he said like, I'm yeah. doing this for you guys. Yes. And it was just so beautiful because he he was this, uh, he's, first off, he's one of my, my oldest friends. And then secondly, when he scored this, he like gave it to, to his, his mates who were sitting there and it was just, it was unbelievable, it's something I will always remember. Yeah. And even with, with Tian, when he invited me, like, uh, sorry, I'm saying Tian, it's Frank. Uh, it's fine, you can call him Tian, we know him as Tian. Tian from Zero Life. Yeah. So Frank, he, he invited us to the premiere for, for the movie later that year. So oh, later nice. that year, that, and at the premiere for the movie, <clears> that year, he said this in a speech, he said, everyone always keep telling me that Hans could take, get the best out of people, and I never, realize what it meant until that moment that yeah. very moment when this yeah. guy scored that third try and we got to the field afterwards we went onto the field and he just hugged him 
he had a heart this they were crying and they were crying and he said like on that moment he knew what to do when he when he's got to play this role of Monty. he knew how he's got to play yes. it how, how this movie's going to yeah. turn out and wow. it, um, yeah it was just beautiful it was really yeah. great. a great story then you, you got your first call up after school um for the cheetahs um, what was that? What did it feel like? What was your, your first call up like? You know, after school, uh, I, I played a little bit at the uh, Shimla's, but I mm. wasn't at this is a university, the, the, the Coxies. Mm. Um, so I played there at Coxies a little bit, but I was in and out. I, I wasn't really, um, I didn't fit in really. I was, mm. I, didn't, I didn't have a place. And then uh, I remember we played against, uh, it's just when the Vast Pickup started. I think it was the first or second year of the Vast Pickup, it was 2008. Yeah. Um, when uh, we played against UJ, it's our first game. UJ in, in Joburg, they had a great team. Uh, my brother and I both played. Mm -hmm. And another good friend of ours, Wilton Peterson, he ended up playing later. Uh, for, for the cheetahs as well. Oh. He's from George. So Walter's not playing anymore because he injured his leg badly. Uh, I think he's playing for Hamilton's at the moment, I'm not sure. Anyways, so Walter and I both played in that game. After the game, our team manager, the bus back to Walter and I, said, so listen, Paul True, uh, just phone him up. He, he wants the two of you to go to his training camp. So we we went to we went to a training camp in Stellenbosch with uh, with the the team of seven. Seven, yeah. And uh, Paul Paul told us, listen, um, I can't promise you anything. You guys are just here for a camp. You, you probably won't go on tour, um, but just try your best. So we both trained very very hard. Yeah. And, um, and uh, luckily or unfortunately for, for, for one or two players got injured, but luckily for us, the gap opened and we, we played on Hong Kong and uh, Adelaide uh, wow. Sevens Tour. So wow. the first time I went overseas was to Hong Kong. It was yeah. uh, also a massive shock. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <a few> group, <laughs> to, so yeah, just after, it was just after that. Uh, so yeah, even before that, I wasn't really in this under. There was this uh, the Springboks under twenty camp, so I was invited for some one or two camps, but I wasn't really. I got. I, I knew that you know, you just know when you're not in the team when you mm. when you 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 second behind someone else. So I knew I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, the chances of me going on two of these guys are not not great. Mm. Uh, but luckily, I got uh, the call up to the sevens. I had a great tournament in. Adelaide, the second tournament, we, we beat New Zealand in the final uh, uh, of, of that tournament. And, it, we was and on the way back, uh, I got a call from uh, uh, Eric Souls, who was the coach at the uh, under 20s that year, and he told me, Listen, we, we, we want you in the team. And then all of a sudden, stuff just, just fall into place. I went on this under 20 camp, uh, went to, a, to the under 20 World Cup, was in Wales that year. I remember we the guys are back, so that's a year older than me. Uh, Lee Halfpenny and Dave, um, what's his name? It's the 13, Foxy is his nickname. And, uh, um, the 13 for what? Davies, Jonathan uh, Davies. Uh, yes, yes, Jonathan oh. Davies. The two of them from <coughs> Australia, those guys like Percy Beale, okay. uh, yes. uh, Star Star. Uh, and uh, Dave Pope for play for them. So it was yeah. a, a massive, there was really some quality. Even New Zealand, had, there was really, really quality tournament. And then after that tournament, we got to, uh, I remember it well when I got to the airport um, in Joburg. And on the airport, at the airport of Joburg, uh, uh, Al Miller. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm only, getting to your, I'm only getting to your question now. Perfect. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, oh, Alas called me yeah. and uh, he said, uh, yeah, also a massive one of my role models, someone yeah. I. Uh, I looked up to as a player, still look up to him today. Yeah, no, uh, 1997. Yeah, they lack a mallet uh, back uh, in the uh, day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was a guy, if, if I, if, when I was a kid, when I think about Cheetah's rap, yeah, 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 I yeah, think too. about Alfred yeah. yeah. Mallet, uh, yeah. yeah. a little hair, and uh, outside center, yeah. yeah, throwing little dummies, and yeah, yeah. That, that, that was my. That's a guy I probably, uh, uh, when, when I, I see Cheetah Rugby, I, I think about him, probably one of the first uh, names that come, comes up in my head. Yeah. Um, and he, he phoned me and I, I was like, it was obviously I didn't have his number on my phone. He said, listen, it's Al Sambal. And I was like, oh my, my word. And, uh, and he said, okay, I'm the, I'm the team manager at the Cheetahs now. 
Yeah. And uh, you you need to come to blue. You need to come to training now. I was like, I'm in Joburg. I just landed from uh, from what Wales. He said like, yeah, okay, it's all right. Someone will get you at the airport. <laughs> so I was like, yes, okay. And we yeah. got to. I literally stopped at Bloom Airport. Someone picked me up there. Went straight to to Vodacom Park. Uh, yes. Uh, um, to the stadium and and then started the, like with a video session. They said, okay, there's a game this weekend. You might might play. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I played that first weekend. I think the, my first game, my first game was against uh, Western Province in Cape Town. Oh. Uh, I benched 80 minutes. I didn't I didn't go onto the field. Oh, okay. so I, I was I was on the bench for 80 minutes. And the score was six nine. The half time score was three three. It was raining, raining so wet. wet. Yeah. The half time score yeah was three all, and then full time six nine <laughs> for Western Province. I think <laughs> uh, eighty minutes. Yeah. So I didn't play. It wasn't my first game, but it was my first game on the bench. And yeah. the second game was against the Bulls at Loftus, and I was I was on the bench, and uh, uh, one of our players. Uh, Cut his uh, head open. I think it was Yerbia Yonker who made a post one. Yeah. And I had to come on. Yeah. And I came on for like five minutes when he got his skip stitches. And yeah. when he got back, uh, I, I got on. And that was all I had. Yeah. And then on the third game, we played the uh, the, the Sharks in Blue Jack. And that, that was half. Then I started that game. Right. It was yeah. my first game. Yeah. My first game I played for, for, Exciting. for, for the Cheetah. And the score? And the yeah. score in the Sharks game? Yeah, it was twenty. If we won comfortably, I still got a photo. It's a woman blue for that score. His name was um, Anas Fasel. He, he makes like photos and uh, he do co- collages. I mean, he gave it to me as a present. Like this collage is my first game, and he's got uh, the scoreboard is on the cross. That's why oh, I know nice. the scoreboard. Yeah. It's, it's uh, something like 35, 35 to twelve or something like that. Oh, Freddie, love it's, it. it's funny. I love uh, it. Freddie, <laughs> Freddie, uh, it's uh, it's funny. Freddie Mitchell, he was the team oh, oh, yeah. playing against. Oh him yes, for, yeah. uh, for, for the storm, uh, for the shots. Yeah. Um, even later, um, uh, when we got when I got to France, you I played against him a lot of times, uh, and I always like had a little chat with him, but not nothing. And I just every time I play him or see him against, so I was like, yeah, I made my 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 uh, curry cup debut against this Frenchman. Mm. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just, it's funny, it's ironic, yeah. wow. it's funny, how it works it's, out. it's beautiful. Yeah. 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 To us, um, you know, a season for the Cheetahs that really stands out is the 2013 season when you had, when you guys had Kuni and obviously yourself and Nairik Rousseau and Billy LaRue and all those guys. Um, you know, it was a special season. Could you tell us a bit more about the standout moments of that season for yourself? Mm. Yeah, it was it was a great season. I, I think we had a group of players we, we built to something, and um, uh, a guy like Adrian Strauss was mm. he was our captain, and I think he he played a massive role in in the way our team. Um, yeah, the way we gelled or, or connected as a group. Mm. Um, also, Narco and us uh, had a. It's a bit old school, but I believe the team, a team. So I played with some guy, I won't mention them, but, but now in the professional era, here in France a lot, you, you buy players, you buy guys yeah. from all over and yeah. you expect them to play well because you think it's a bunch of stars mm. and they should be able to play well. And it, it, a lot of times history shows it does, doesn't work like mm. that. So I feel like if the player's individual uh, level is high enough, the group collective level would be high enough yeah. but it's not not always true it, it's sometimes but not always but for me that's m- more true is when the collective uh, level is high yeah. then every individual level level is, is high for me yeah. it's, it's more that way and I think mm-hmm. us and our thought yeah. about rugby uh, thinks about rugby the same yeah. and, and about our group they, they realized this is we we won't start. I mean, we won't. Uh, the names you na- you call now, yes, everyone knows it now. But when we started that yeah. in that year, two thousand twelve, no one talked about us like that. No one yeah. said Billy Larue's name. Billy played for Bullock. Yeah. They they got Billy from the Bullock. He, he had a 
he had a season in racing metro uh, in france that no one even knew about him he didn't play he played for the the uh the b team and then oh. they sent him back and then he played for the boerland in yeah. wellington and then obviously he got it from boerland so he got to bloom as uh as as no one i mean yeah, and, no. and myself as well we won't we we got smashed by the rules uh, the year before that by 50 points 56 yeah. points so we we were more of a guys i said listen guys we sorry for having but we cut we not, <laughs> no. we we should play if we play uh we, we're not good enough to play individual rap we yeah. should play together as a group and then if we play together we'll be we'll be stronger we'll yeah. be better and then then maybe some individuals will, will stand up obviously they're quality guys <coughs> like and yeah. you, you for me it would always make it you would have always made it uh mm-hmm. to the top level uh, mm-hmm. regardless of what team he, he played but still he, he bought into this Mm. uh collective effort we we spoke about that uh that helped us to to achieve what we want and then obviously from there a lot of players got got opportunities like myself for, from that year that's where i got my gap to play to come yeah. play in france uh but he but he uh, went on to play in japan and then later the wasps and then uh back in japan Mm. Uh, Lewis de Jong is playing in, in England where he's playing now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Andrew Rousseau went on to play in England as well. Some of the last picked another year or two after we left. But yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, it was just a good, I think collectively yeah. we, we understood what we need to do and, and, and it worked out well, yeah. well for us. Okay. My, 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 fav- my standout game of that season was that game against the Canes in Wellington. Yeah. Where you guys were, you yeah. were far behind, and you guys came back. It yes. was just like amazing. It was. Yeah. I mean, I woke yeah. up early to watch it, and it was just that made my <laughs> my year that game. Oh, it was great to see a great yeah. season. Mm. I think it was the first time that he just won in New Zealand. Yeah. yeah. If I'm not, if I'm not uh, mistaken, yeah. we won against uh, some Australian teams before. Waratahs. I think I mean, that yeah. was our first, yeah. our first victory against a New Zealand team in New Zealand. Yeah. And it was so good because I, I, I remember we stood behind the poles and uh, Andre Pusso obviously is a character. The guys know him. He's a, he's a funny guy. Okay. He's, a, um, he's a real character. And he, um, I remember standing behind the poles and they scored like two or three quick tries. It yeah. was Bowden Barrett, he was still a young guy. Yeah. He scored one try, he, 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 he spun around me. Five meters on the cheetah side of halfway, but here comes Barrett. Looking to link up, still looking to link up. Still going, Barrett, could go all the way, and he will do. What a try. Was it that we, we, uh, we looked at some old footage and uh, Johan specifically mentioned that um, there was a moment in 2012. It must have been the same game, possibly. Yeah. The Pit van Sail took a quick right. tap. He was clean mm. through. There was no in front of you. And uh, he didn't take the pass. If I remember correctly, you were first at the ruck. And the ball spat out at the back of the ruck. And the Hurricanes took the ball. And that try probably would have been... Um, the... I mean, you, you won the game anyway. But yes. that would have taken the, the game away from yeah. them completely. Do you, in moments like that, do you, do you, what's your reaction towards that player or do you immediately forget about it if you win the game? No, I remember, I still remember it. No, I remember <laughs> it my best. Yeah. Pete was my, he was my roommate a lot of times on tour, he was my roommate. Yeah. He doesn't snore. I was just cool in the stadium a lot of times, but I could you know, big, big guys. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah so, uh, Peter was still, he's a quiet guy, he's a great guy, so he was yeah. keen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, I remember it so well after the like in the game even when it was on the ground, I tapped him. I was like, "Yes, man, pass." <laughs> and, uh, and he said, "No, he thought he could." I don't know what he was. Thinking. Yeah, he, was he wasn't thinking. Angry. He wasn't I'm thinking. Not angry at him. Yeah, yeah. 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 Also, uh, yeah. a couple of times I could have passed, and I didn't. So I'll never hold it against him. But yeah. I do remember it. that night I told him. <laughs> you learn from it. I suppose you learn from those situations. What did we? Oh, yeah, we watched the the Bulls this weekend, where they, a pass should have gone inside as well. Yeah, could have changed, changed the game. A uh, young guy, Marco. Marco van Yeah, well, it's difficult. Uh, you, when you see it on TV, it's it's, it's so clear. It's so yeah, clear. You, yeah, you yeah. Think, yes, from this guy. Yeah. But 
uh, when you're running at that pace, you're tired. You, yeah. you, you, uh, yeah. Yes, it's, it's always easy on if you sit on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> it is. You it say, is. why couldn't you have done that? It really looks easier, but yeah. when, you, when you're on the field, it's. Some players probably make it look easy. Some players just got that natural yeah. uh, instinct that they, 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 they feel. But other players, like myself, I don't have that. I, I also, like for me, I had to make mistakes once or twice uh, to, to know, oh, okay, don't do that there. No. Better to next time you, you learn from it, like you said. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then obviously you moved to, to Montpellier in, in France in 2013. Was it a difficult adjustment? Did it take long to learn French? Uh, actually, I've seen a, an interview with you in French. It seems like you speak French yeah. well. I I am I am French now. I have got a French uh, nationality. Okay. So I'm, uh, I am uh, I've got a double nationality. So I'm South so African and French. Okay. And so it's my kids. So I basically did it. Well, not basically. I mainly did it for 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 them, so they can have a nationality, and then one day if they want to. Uh, come and study here or play here. It yeah. just makes it easier for them. not just in France. You when you have a French passport, you can basically work anywhere in Europe, mm -hmm. not just France. So mm -hmm. it just opens up a lot of doors for them. Uh, for myself, uh, I know um, that I am Afrikaans. Mm -hmm. That I, I want to live in Lufthansa, yeah. and I'll, I'll probably uh, live there for a long time. But yeah. uh, for my my children. Um, I, I, I believe it's a it's a great gift to give them uh, something. I felt like when I when I came to France, I said at least, if not anything, I wanted to to leave them this this gift. So I'm really proud and yeah. happy with the fact that I've achieved that. Um, the language is it's very difficult. Eh? It's a it's a very formal language. So it's it's not like we as in Afrikaans we've got. Uh, three tenses. You've got your today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Basically, there's some stuff, but we don't really use the the other. Yeah. Uh, but these guys they, they get very, very, very formal conversations where the tenses is unbelievable, completely complex. They mm -hmm. they 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 make it very, very difficult. They've got like three, four, five, five, six different tenses. They've mm -hmm. got different um, formalities when you speak to someone, the whole verb change, the word change. So it, it's complicated. A, a lot of French people even tell you when they can't even uh, <laughs> speak 100%. So you will yeah. never be fluent. I will never ever be fluent, no. fluent French. Uh, but I can help myself. I can. I, I think I, I'll be able to stand in front of a, a crowd and give a speech on a topic that I'm well familiar with, yeah. um, say rugby or sport or yeah. or beer or <laughs> whatever stuff you might like. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and I saw on your page, I saw on your Facebook page, you've got a, a Brian, that's another one. So yeah. uh, and Brian. So I'll probably, on those topics, I'll be able to, to yeah. talk and uh, to help myself, obviously. Well, that's our, our next question is uh, you and the other guys, there were a few South Africans with you and obviously other foreigners in the, in the team at Montpellier and I assume where you are now in, in Kaska, am I right? Um, there are some guys that you hang out with outside of rugby. What do you do in your free time? Um, can you bry? Are you allowed to bry on an open fire? And uh, do they have a few good beers or do you drink mainly wine? Or what's the social life like outside of rugby? Oh, the French are very social. They very, very social. Yeah. They, they, um, they've got this thing in, in France. Uh, their life is a little bit slower than in South Africa or than anywhere in the world. Yeah. So they are uh, because the sun goes down this late. They, they just they later in the day. So they've got this um, thing that says entre midi et deux. So midi midi means midday means twelve o'clock and deux is two. So between twelve and two, yeah. basically nothing happens yet. This okay. is a, this is lunch time, and yeah. this is a nothing is open. It's nothing open between twelve and two. It's closed. Yeah. You, you can't phone. Don't phone anyone. Don't <laughs> phone. Uh, don't try and uh, get hold of uh, anything. Any company. If you yeah. need to phone some someone, they won't answer between twelve and two. 
but you you see companies work until eight eight thirty sometimes, which is unheard of. So I think five o'clock is closed yeah, no, closed down. No. Uh, but yeah, as well, the, 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 some people only work start working at nine and half past nine early in the morning. So the day is is uh, It's like it's later. It's yeah. So uh, I also when I got you, I thought the guys only drink wine. But they love beer. They drink a lot of beer. Yeah. They, one funny thing that they do, they drink beer with, with a little bit of syrup in it. They'll put like, uh, maybe uh, like, you know, uh, unlock, unlock beer. Yeah. Like, unlock well, yeah, beer. Yeah. like even a, uh, um, different flavors. Some, they've got this flavor, it's like a peach one, and the other one is like a grenadine, uh, 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 oh, yeah. flavor. It's like a, like a berry kind of flavor. Yeah. They put that in like a, uh, uh, so you have a, um, a demi is like a, 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 a draft. So if yeah. you, you ask for a draft, they'll put some some peach flavor in it and it okay. just makes it a bit sweeter. It gives you a moussa headache. <laughs> don't drink it too much. It's too sweet. Yeah. So I, I, in the beginning, it was like, that's a cool drink. Yes, yeah. I was drinking a lot of it. And <laughs> the next day, I was like, oh, no. Yeah. Best stuff to stick to the normal beer. Yeah. And obviously, their wine is good. They drink. They drink a lot of wine. They know their wine. The guys yeah. are very, they, they very clued up and, and what wine they like and what not. Mm. And they do drink a lot of rosé wine. There's like a white wine, but it's got this pinkish color for yeah. the summer a lot. Yeah. Um, and then they they bry a lot. They they, they they love you can you you're allowed to bry on site. They, they love okay. It. They, they don't call it bry. They call it bar- barbecue. Barbecue. Uh, <laughs> barbecue. Uh, uh, but they make there's there's two for me there's two pieces of meat they eat uh, everywhere I came this is like the two um, main pieces mm-hmm. and the two I came to enjoy the most here yeah. so it's a it's called the entrecot and the other one other one is a cote de boeuf so entrecot literally means between so entre means between and cot means a size okay. so between sides so this is your in, in, Africa, in South Africa, we have the, the prime rib and the rib eye. Yeah. So we'll have, this is a, this equivalent, it's the same as the prime rib and the rib eye. I think the Angkot is the rib eye and the Kot de Boeuf, uh, that's the one with the piece of the, with the, you know, like the one with the milk still in that like Yeah, marrow. the marrow, yeah. yeah. The, the marrow in it, that, that's, yeah. I think that will be the, the, the rib eye, mate. So yeah. they call that the Kot, uh, the Cote de Boeuf. So this one, it's a, it's a really big piece of meat. Eh? It's, a, it's a thick piece. It's like almost a K, a one kilogram piece of meat. Yeah. Um, and it's very nice marbled. Like you can see that the oh. fat really goes in there. The, a lot of the, the, the cows here also, uh, not they, 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 they walk around freely. You know, it's not like yeah. it's in a, a, a cage where they got fed. Uh, uh, yeah. through that thing. they walk there was a free range so this thing you, you really gotta you gotta put it on the you turn it a lot you put it on the side and you put it on you turn around put it on every side and then it's still bloody in the inside but they yeah. love it they eat it yeah. like that they like raw raw meat yeah. uh, they've got this one uh, dish that i hate it it's um <laughs> what is it I share the buff. I share the buff is like a, it's basically a patty. So what we get like a nice patty, uh, mm. but one that you made yourself. So it's a mole slice mm. uh, put together like in a patty, and then they they eat it so raw. They, they, ah. they, you can eat it. They eat it like hundred percent raw. It's cold here. Uh, yes. And then what they do, they crack the egg. They'll take a raw egg on top. They crack it open on top, and then the egg will like run into this raw patty. And uh, with a lot of spices and Tabasco sauce and nice mm-hmm. spices. Good, the spices is actually uh, not uh, not bad. I, I like spice, but um, I, I had it once and the, the chef, I told the chef, I can't eat it raw. Like <laughs> and like, and he said, like, okay, I can make, I can help you. And he, he what he did is he called it a allee retour. Allee retour is like a return ticket. Like, yeah. it literally means like you're going there and back. Yeah. So he said, he'll do it all over too. I was like, okay, is that the best you can do? Give me an all over too. And he's like, okay. So he literally did this with, he'd go like, shh, shh, and he took it off. He just like, yes, he, he made so it all over too. And then he took it off and he gave it to me. And I, yes, I was, I ate it. I actually had a couple of uh, uh, drinks in before. So, <laughs> and I, uh, I ate it, but I had a stomach ache the, the, the uh, next day. I didn't feel uh, very well. But they love it. Be, so this is the entree. This is one of the, 
main beef entrees, uh, yeah. pork gerecht in France that mm. you can that you can have. Uh, it's it's very very popular. Okay, so this is obviously um, <coughs> this is now quite a recent uh, thing that happened, but obviously Archie Sneijman and the Allende and and CJ Stander, they had that inc incident and we were just wondering, did, do you have to put petrol on the fire in, in France or is the wood at least dry enough for a bride? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was saying, I, 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 I read the article and I saw all the comments. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say that, 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 that the South African public or supporters, I, yeah. Some of the comments out there was I was like yes, yeah. but it's funny. I mean, you laugh and uh, yeah. but yeah, it's, uh, accidents can happen. Yeah. It can it can happen. Yeah. But no, our wood is good. Yeah, actually, uh, they 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 sometimes buy you with vineyards, like old oh. old vin okay. vineyards. Uh, yeah, vineyard stock. Yeah, some of the old yeah the vineyards that they they throw out. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they do in South Africa. I just I mean, we I never left no. so it's to, to to anywhere where they want. So yeah, but, and yeah, in the in Montpellier, there's a lot in in Cast, There's not a lot. But where I'm now actually is in BC. It's, it's close to Montpellier. Oh, yeah. There's okay. a lot of uh, a lot of uh, as well. So like, you you see a lot of people uh, yeah. the, the the old old piece of wood from the vineyard that they 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 dry with. So mm. yeah. Okay, and then the the big talk in, in South Africa is obviously now Super Rugby versus European Rugby. So you were in tight Super Rugby when the competition was very strong. And before it became bigger and they added the, the Japan, not, nothing against those teams, but obviously the competitions changed a little bit. And do you think the skill levels and intensity and so forth is the, is the same in European rugby than it is in, in super rugby? It's a, it's a difficult question for me. Um, in, in, in Europe or in France at least, let me speak from my own experience, in mm. France the season starts in September. So you got September, October, and a little bit of November. That's nice weather. It's a, a it's a, a dry uh, and hot. And then middle November, it's it's cold. It's winter. Middle yeah. November it starts getting cold. So you got the whole half of November, the whole December, the whole January, the whole February, and at least until half of March. That's wet, cold, and muddy, yeah. and winter. That's that's why, what I said earlier, maybe a guy 130, 135, 40 yeah. can play in this, mm. this rugby, uh, <clears throat> this, this kind of rugby. And um, so, yeah, a lot of teams play, probably don't play with that skill, and it's long. The season, I mean, in top 14, you play <laughs> the 13 teams, home and away, so 26 mm. teams, just in top 14, 26. Yeah games then you have your Anakin Cup games in between that you play at least 30 games sure. uh, a season it's a lot you play you really play a lot of, and they rotate between players they you've got the squads is bigger but um, you play a lot of rugby so they've got this I think that the the mock it's like uh, if you want to compare it to running it's it's more it's a marathon than, than a sprint yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe the, the rugby always also look the same as, in the sense of that uh, in Super Rugby, it's a sprint, so the guys are not, they, even the games are not a sprint. It's, 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 it's quick and it's, uh, the skills are good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's more of a strategic, long marathon where you got to grind it out some games. It's not pretty, but you got to win it with one point or three points, you'll take it. Or even if you get this losing bonus point, it's good. So you play negative sometimes. Hmm. That's a one factor. The other big factor in France, massive factor for me is the fact that there's every year a promotion and relegation so the last two teams always fall out uh, now they play uh, they play actually play a, a relegation match but you you're in trouble if you second loss or last one log you're in trouble yeah. and not just the team i mean that's that's for everyone working everyone yeah. on your staff like even the guys in the the the, the change rooms they uh, job is also in uh, in trouble if, if this happens so what this does is it puts so much stress on uh, on the players on the coaching staff on everyone yeah. that they go back to this uh, listen we need to play low risk we need to take a very very uh, low risk uh, in, in in our preparation we we need to play a negative kind of game okay. you can't 
play <clears> expensive. We've gone for if we if we lose, we we lose our jobs. Yeah. Yeah. So there's always these like this this bottom five six teams that play like this, and it's it's bad. They win some. They win a lot of games, but the, the rack is not pretty. Uh, yeah, yeah. For me, that's it's a, I don't know. I don't know how to how to how they're going to change it. I, I don't think they they can or they won't because it's business and it's massive business. Uh, Teams need to get, teams want to come up from the pre two wants to play in top uh, Even now, there's a, th- a third league here in France. It's called the National League. This is like the federal one. They've got a proper. This is becoming a proper pro uh, league. So oh, yeah. we've got four. France got fourteen pro teams. Then they've sure. got sixteen yes. professional pro league two teams. So that's uh, wow. that's thirty. And then they've got this new league coming in. There's so much. There's so much rugby here, it's unbelievable, sure. yeah. it's crazy, I mean, yeah. uh, professional teams are, are in France, it's, 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 really, it's really crazy. Okay, this is obviously quite uh, linked to that question that we just asked you, but uh, you know, what is your opinion on the move away from Super Rugby to United to the United Rugby Championship? Um, I don't know, I don't know, I think mm. there, there might be some... Uh, it might be good for 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 some and not good for others. Mm. Um, it's difficult the timing we are now. I feel sorry for young players. I feel so no. sorry for mm. for under nineteens, under twenties, even matric players who can't uh, can't have a craving. We can't have under nineteen year. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of players who, who, who didn't. I mean, I didn't. I didn't really know if I'm going to play rugby until 30, 32. Um, I didn't know that when I was 18. I always had this backup and I had to study. I still have to do something else. You have to do something um, in your back pocket, you know, what if you get injured? So I, I guess there's a lot of players actually now who's going to listen. I don't know. Well, I have to study. I have to do something else because I don't know if there's going to be rugby for the nights or the 20s or, uh, or even the tricks. They, they aren't rugby for them for the last few years. So mm-hmm. this COVID is just it really the timing is it, it made everything much more difficult for for South Africa making that move from the super to the uh, northern hemisphere but I think it can work out I don't want to I don't I don't have an opinion in the, in the sense of it's a good thing or a bad thing I think uh, I think it can work uh, I think it is uh, something that that might be good for I, I can see a lot of positive positive things come out of it uh obviously obviously it's it's it's, it's not great uh, not playing against new zealand you want to play against them you want to play against australia i mean new zealand for me new zealand obviously it's, it's one of the toughest the best players uh, teams in the, in the world so it sucks not being able to measure yourself against them mm. but i think it can be it can be really exciting playing against uh, uh england teams yeah. and playing against even french teams playing here and all the i yeah. think it'll make i mean just thinking about the travel it'll be so much easier yeah. so, so easy the flight it's really a, a, a night flight to be here you don't have to tour for four or five weeks in yeah. Zealand, australia so in a logistic manner i, I guess it, it can work and, and there's a, a lot of Thing that you can see happening, but um, yeah, I'm. I'll be excited. I'll be. I'll, I think it's exciting. It's exciting times, and I'm happy. I'm happy that it happened. Mm. I think it's. A, let's let's have a go. Let's see see what it where it takes us. Let's see if it works. I think in two or three five years you'll see. Uh, it was yeah. great. Let's continue. It's not. Uh, They'll, they'll try something else. Yeah, we can always go yeah. back. We can always go back to Super yeah. Rugby, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I think, so, I mean, South Africa, we produced the best. I mean, uh, we've, we've produced the, the most uh, players. We, we've got players everywhere, everywhere around the world. I mean, yeah. you've seen this stuff. This, we've got this guy on Instagram. He, he opened his Instagram, Instagram account not too long ago called Suffers Abroad. Mm, yeah. Abroad. yeah. And, through him, you could just, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's unbelievable to realize how many South Africans are playing all over. And it's yeah. becoming like soccer almost. I think that's where I see a job. Yeah. It's also yeah. very open minded in the way of, mm-hmm. listen, you can't stop these guys going yeah. over. Let's work with them. It's like, it's like Brazil. I, I remember I, had, uh, I, I listened to this clip of uh, Wayne Rooney and Frank Lampard, some of the English uh, yeah. legends, when, uh, when they said it's, 
it, when, when they when they told the story, I, I was like so uh, I liked it so much. He, he said um, it was so weird for them playing for Chelsea or Man United and then coming to this England camp. The vibe was weird. It was like mm. yes, we we actually we hate each other. We, we play <laughs> yeah. each other all the time. Yeah. Everyone yeah. speaks about someone else behind their back because we see each other the whole time. But they know the Brazilian guys, the Portugal guys, the uh, Italian guys who plays with them in this Premiership League. Whenever they get together to their uh, Brazilian team, yeah. they love it. They, yeah. they, they go to this team and they, they eat their Brazilian food, they talk in their Brazilian language, they, yeah. uh, well, it, what, what they speak. So yeah, Portuguese is it. Uh, <laughs> and they, they speak their, their, their native language and they... they, they uh, they joke, they have their jokes, they have their stuff. And um, and then when they play, they just magic, they just click mm. and everything gets together and they just flip and beat everyone uh, to yeah. the ground. Where yeah. these English guys, they don't get that. They, because they're together the yeah. whole time and they see each other while they're playing the same competition. And when he said it, I felt like, yes, but that, I think that's where South Africa is going. That they, they, we, uh, the guys playing the board, playing everyone else, is you. You, you're playing in France, but you're not French, man. You don't speak their language, you don't. No. But when you get to the camp, when yeah. you get to the book, you get to the camp. But when they get together, I think there's something that just clicks. Yeah. And, and I hope we can see that now with the Lions. I believe we are. I believe we're going to see that. I yeah. believe we're going to see that these guys haven't played together, but they've played right here. Because most of the guys in that 15, starting 15, they has played now. But yeah. they played yeah. in Japan, they played there, and they played there against with these teams. So they fit and they're on four. But they just haven't played together. But I don't, I honestly, in my heart, believe it's not a problem. I think yeah. these guys are going to come in and it's going to be like like your mates you haven't seen for, for a while. But when you get together, the, the yeah. stuff just clicks. And um, yeah, that's, that's what, that's what I, I, I really uh, I feel strongly about about where South Africa is at the moment with, with Iran. And I like the fact that, that Rossi and Jock is open minded about that. Mm. Are you willing to to risk a, a prediction for the for the Lions? Uh, three nil. Yeah. It's, <laughs> no, 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 not three nil. <laughs> it's 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 gonna be. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm not good at prediction. <laughs> I'm not good. I'm trying to, to to sound good. Yeah, it's gonna be like this. It's gonna be like this. But I'm really bad. Like honestly, the last time I made a prediction, uh, it wasn't even close. So, uh, <laughs> It's, kind of, it's, a, it's a guess, I'm guessing. Um, the, I mean, I remember well the last, I was I was there and uh, I watched one test, not the final test, I watched the second test uh, yeah, in 2009 mm. and lost this year. Yeah. Uh, or was it the first test in, in, in Joburg? I watched the one in Joburg, I think we lost. The test yeah, that was the last one, yeah. Hugo, Mona, he's caught it's like an intercept. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, yeah, I watched that game, it was in Joburg. Um, and uh, and then obviously we won this, the second one and then the last one we had to decide it was the side of, of Mourne and you know. So if we can get something similar to that, it'd be, it'd be oh, awesome. Amazing. Uh, but now I'm confident. I, I'm really I'm confident. I, I think um, for us, I, I may be seeing it a little bit different than people living in South Africa. Mm. Um, I'm seeing it different in that sense of I'm so freaking keen to get back to people I love, people yeah. I know, people who speak my language and, and and feel what I feel and see what I see and, and think the way I think. And then I, I feel like, yes, if I can get into that cheetah camp now, I, I, I can feel like, yeah, we can, I can play again. I, I'll be happy to play. And I, and I, I believe that the, the box feel the same way that a lot of those players have been playing yeah. in Japan or in England and they feel a little bit the same in the way I feel yeah. and they feel like yeah if I can get into the book camp I'll, I'll feel like I'm home again almost you know yeah. and, and in in saying that I, I, I think we're gonna we're gonna take them two two uh, two games to one at least if it's okay. not three to zero I like that <laughs> yes, uh, okay just a bit about um, your favorite Favorite players that you played against, yeah. Oh, tough, the toughest, tough. the best player that you played against. Toughest and best players. Um, so 
when I started at the Cheetahs, my first my first captain at the Cheetahs when when I played Super Rugby uh, was Juan Smith. Yes, and uh, I always looked up to him as I still look up to him as a player, as a uh, as a man, whatever everything he represents. Um, and I always thought he was tough. I always thought this is guy's tough, but I always played again, uh, played with it. I, no. always, I never played against it. Mm-hmm. And then my very my it was this was my first game in France. When when I got here, uh, I played for Montpellier. Almost the same. This is so funny. It's the same as the Cheetahs. So my first game for Montpellier was Montpellier against Cast. Uh, my 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 last team, and I benched yeah. eighty minutes. Exactly yeah. the same as my first uh, 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 character game. Mm. So I was on the bench. We played against Cast. Cast beat Montpellier in Montpellier, and I I benched the whole eighty minutes. He didn't put me on. And the next game we played Toulon in Toulon. And uh, I, I shot nice my play. first start. So it's, uh, you guys will fall. Uh, I still remember this team. Like I've got a picture of their team. It was yeah. Uh, it was Paul Heymans. Yeah. Paul Heymans was the was the prop. The hooker uh-huh. was Kate Burden. The <laughs> other prop was a uh, some some Fijian some Fijian Ah oh, okay. Bucky's Puerta was, yeah. was the lock. Donny the soap. Donny the soap. Donny was on the bench. I think. Okay. The other lock was uh, this. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a French guy. Um, I can't remember his name now. Juan Smith was the one, uh, one uh, loose board, and Dylan, uh, Stefan Armitage was the oh, other yeah. one. The number eight was also this massive, I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> then the, the team was Johnny Wilkinson, yeah. Matt Gitter was the 12, 12 yeah. Matthew Bustero was the 13, yes. <laughs> Drew Mitchell was the wing, Brian Banner was the other wing, yes. and then Dylan Armitage was the fullback. So yeah. this yes. was my first game, I was like, yes, welcome to France. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, we got 60 points, we, we took 60 points, we lost 60 to 3 or something like that, so oh, we absolutely smashed. Yeah. Um, but that day, uh, Juan had unbelievable game. He, he scored one try in the corner like with his right hand, but he just he, he, he reached out to this corner. He had a, he had a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant game. Yeah. That was my first game I played against him. And uh, <clears throat> obviously they had a massive team, they had a great team, but, but John just... He, he was, I think he was man of the match in this game as well. He just had absolutely, he, he stood out from all those, uh, no. from all those, the, those stars. He, he stood out. And that, for me, is even better than a team full of stars. One guy standing out from all those stars. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, my toughest uh, opponent will, will then be uh, Juan Smith. Okay, fantastic. And then we just wanted to add a little one of our own. Um, a center pair, if you had to pick. Um, someone you played against, or someone you wanted to play against, or the, possibly the best center center that you played with. Mm. So in in uh, at the Cheetahs, I played with uh, with the Mayer Bosman a lot yeah. when I started. Um, Mayer had a massive pass, so both sides, left and right, yeah. really rip the ball. So as a 13, it's not always that great because he, <laughs> he saves you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, um, but but he is a he's a he's a great he kicks great he's a good he's a good player. Then I played with a guy called Corner Ace. I, oh, I really nice. enjoyed playing with him. Yeah, he's yeah, a yeah. great a, a great team guy. So yes, we had a we had a good understanding. Then I played with uh, Johan Sardi. Mm-hmm. So me and Sardi also we we the same age. We played against each other at school level. He was in uh, Paul Gymnasium, um, and we never played against each other at school, but we, we had a great, great understanding because he had a certain way of playing. I was very, we were very different. Yeah. And he told me from the first day, listen, I don't like this, I like this, I don't like that, and I like that. I was yeah. like, perfect, that's all the stuff I don't like. And, okay. I like, uh, and we, we really we complimented each other because we, didn't, we were very opposite. Mm-hmm. Uh, even personality wise, but it was great because we were so open and honest on the start, mm-hmm. so we, we gelled together quite nicely. Yeah. Uh, when I got to France, uh, my first, uh, uh, it's funny, my first uh, rugby, uh, my first centre mate was Weynard Willisie. Oh, okay. Uh, at Montpellier. Yeah. yeah. And Weynard, I didn't know him, I just, obviously, when you see Weynard, you've always got this picture of this long, <laughs> yeah. uh, good star. Good star, yeah. And yeah. when you get to meet him, you, you realize that he's a great guy, he's a, he's a good guy, he's, a, he's from the three state, actually, he was yeah. born here, uh, born there. And uh, 
Yeah, he's a he's a great guy. I I, I beat time with him. I played a bit with uh, Reggie Ranger. He was oh, yes. a yes. couple of yeah. couple of games. Good talent. Yeah. Nice yeah. nice no arm tackles that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, uh, I didn't enjoy too much. <laughs> He's not, uh, uh, what do you say? Not he, he, you don't know what he's going to do. He's very <laughs> yeah. so you can't read him. I don't think he does, he, he does brilliant things. Yeah. Um, but he, he's very unpredictable. Yeah. Um, then Anthony Tuvaki to to oh. played with him. I had a very, very good relationship with him. Still yeah. today we talk. He's, uh, he's a quality guy, yeah. great friend, um, and a mentor as well. Uh, and then uh, I played with a French guy, Cast for long, called Thomas Pobezu. He still plays for Cast. He's a very, very good, very aggressive French uh, French centre. Yeah. And then, funny enough, when I now at Bezier, in my last season in France, I played with a, with a guy called Jeffrey Williams. Mm. So Jeff uh, Jeff was in uh, Salbon College in the, oh. in the same year as, as I. So he was in 2000, he matriculated 2006, so one year before me. But we oh. played, we actually played against each other, okay. uh, Gravers and Salbon in 2006. And then when I got here, I was like, yeah, Jeff, and we just, we, we also, we, we had a great, great, oh. uh, good relationship. Uh, and we, we good friends now. We probably stay friends for, for time to come. So, yeah, the, in the, in the midfield, you, you, I think you, uh, you make or you build a, a, a good relationship uh, with with your with your centre mate because you you gotta trust them, you gotta you gotta under, you gotta have an understanding mm. uh, about the way he plays, the things he likes, the way he mm. doesn't like it. The more time you spend together, probably the easier it gets. Um, but yeah, I feel, I'd say like if each, every one of those guys I mentioned, uh, even those I didn't maybe forgot now, like I really, no. uh, I could take something small from every one of them and, um, uh, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll take it, apply it to my life even after rugby uh, no. and, and build great relationship from, from, from them. And, um, uh, yeah, just a privilege back with, with each and every one of them. Yes, sir, Robert. Um, for us, this it was a it was a privilege talking to you, and we really enjoyed it. Yes, I wish there was way more time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to just chat to you the whole. Yeah. yeah. So it was it was yeah, it was my great. Wife is, my wife was giving me an eye. Yeah. <laughs> she knows I'm. She, she knows yeah. I'm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, really no. We, I, I think we learned. We big rugby fans, obviously. Yeah. Big fans and, of you. Yeah. Yeah, and um, we look forward to seeing you back in South Africa and. Uh, with the cheetahs, hopefully we can we can share a beer. It's a good to see you, Sterke, and I hope I hope that it can go well. Yeah, thanks. Alright, good to know. Thank you. 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 Thank you.